Thanks, everyone, for coming back for another segment of The MCR. Mac and me, my name's TJ. We're on multiple platforms. Uh, uh, and I'm going to give a shameless plug for Rumble. We are on Rumble. MI Conservative Roundtable, all one word. I did look and see that our uh, viewership on that platform is increasing. So to anyone who's watching us on Rumble, thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, uh, with Rumble, we, we won't have to worry about Rumble and other platforms other than YouTube. We won't have to worry about the whole self-censor issue. All right. Well, and uh, YouTube is the only one that we lose views on. Oh, yeah. You, uh, you know, I just... I, and I'm sure some of our faithful viewers might may have noticed YouTube's really jerking us around. So they'll also unsubscribe people. I've had numerous people tell me that they look and all of a sudden they're not subscribed anymore and that they didn't unsubscribe. So, yeah, we're being played with. And and just an, another FYI regarding Rumble. If you uh, if you have an account and subscribe to us, they will send you an email every time we uh, post a new video. OK. So uh, Rumble will notify you via email with every new video we post on there. OK, on to our topic. And uh, with us being the MCR, Michigan Conservative Roundtable, we would be remiss not to review the events of uh, last week's Michigan primary. And uh, it kind of went the way I expected it to. Uh, and there's some very interesting uh, statistics with the uh, outcome of the Michigan primary. Uh, just out of curiosity, Mac, were you surprised with, with anything about it? I was surprised at one thing, and that is, and, you know, as you know, I live in Livingston County, and Trump only got about 60% of the vote, and that was a little surprising to me. I would have expected more like 75 to 80%, but... Uh, as a side note, uh, I, you know, uh, Mac and I did vote and, and something I noticed, uh, and this is just a side note of, from the topic, uh, a fair amount of young people, half the people work in the poll there where I voted, they were young people. And, and I was kind of, I actually, I was kind of pleased to see the young people and a fair number of the young people were of a different ethnicity. OK, OK. Uh, so I, I found as as to where I live, I, I just I found that to be an interesting observation. Younger uh, ethnicities were working the day of the uh, primary in my precinct. OK, so uh, Trump, to put it mildly, stomped Nikki Haley. Uh, and and I was hoping for a 40 point stomping. And it was about that. Depending on the different news reports, you know, some had it anywhere from 39 to 41 percent or points or however you want to phrase yeah, it. Yeah, I believe that uh, the uh, former president came in at about 70 percent roughly and she got yeah. about 26 percent. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. And depending on what news reports you read, but they were all within a point of each other. You know, uh, it, it, it was it was a 40 point stomp in it. And and boy, was I, you know, honestly. I, I and and this goes to what you said uh, uh, played out in your in your area, which is I, I would confess disconcerting. But but yeah, I was I was really hoping for, I was really hoping Nikki Haley would not exceed thirty percent, and uh, overall she did not. And I was kind of hoping for Trump to hit seventy, and he pretty much did, give or take a point. You know, right. uh, he. He uh, Trump received, and and this goes to you know, both parties, both parties pay attention to something that happened last Tuesday here in Michigan. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a whole lot more Republicans turned out than Democrats, and right. it was and it was pretty obvious when it was reported that Trump alone had garnered more votes than all of the Democrat uh, uh, primary uh, uh, nominees, as far as, uh, you know, Biden, uh, that uh, Marianne, uh, whatever her name is, and, and you had that other Democrat, I, I don't even remember his name, you had, you had uh, 
at least three of them uh, on the ballot. And then you had uncommitted. And uh, it sounds like uncommitted may have won <laughs> as far as the Democrats go, you know. Right. But well, uh, I do believe I do believe Biden got more than uncommitted. But given the results of Michigan's uh, Tuesday primary, CNN is in complete meltdown. OK, uh, they they just they just can't come to terms with and and this is happening. You know, I mean, it happened in Michigan. It happened in South Carolina. It, you know, it it's pretty much happened in every state now. President Trump is getting more votes this time around in the primaries than he did in 2016. Right. And and CNN is just in in complete. Just, just complete meltdown over it. Uh, any, any thoughts on that, my comments so far? Well, yeah. Well, what you got at CNN is uh, everybody sitting in, uh, that's in front of that camera is a millionaire, so yeah. they don't worry about the price of gas. They don't worry about the price of food. I mean, I, I jokingly said on Facebook when Trump was president, I could afford a can of corned beef hash, which I like for yeah. breakfast every so often. Now it's yeah. three seventy two a can and not worth it. Well. Uh, in one of Nikki Haley's speech, uh, she was compelled to say that uh, being a woman of her word, she's going to continue in the race. And, she also and, you know, likes to call herself a woman of color. And that, that's nothing but pandering to people of color. Well, uh, the, the Koch brothers, and, I, and we may have reported this last week, but the Koch brothers have pulled their support from her. But uh, she's still getting some uh, establishment uh, support. And, uh, you know, I, you, at this point, you just got to wonder, you know, they're just hoping and praying something bad happens to Trump so that their woman, you know, can uh, take their, charge. Their globalist puppet. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then that's uh, who the Koch last... brothers are. They're, they're globalists. Yeah. In the last uh, in the last couple of days, I read a news report. Uh, Nikki Haley has received uh, support or endorsement, I should say, endorsement from a couple senators. And this won't surprise you, Mac. You may have you may have read the same news report. Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins. Well, you know, yeah, those two are pieces of shit leftists. So who cares? You know, what, what yeah, is, you know, what is there to conservatives? What does their endorsement mean? Well, I was just getting ready to say, you know, there's the saying, known by the company you keep. <laughs> right. You know, well, there you go. I, I mean, what what true conservative wants to keep their company? You know, no. Murkowski, who won as an independent write in because she lost her Republican primary in Alaska. Not and, just that, but they've got some goofy ass election system in Alaska. Yep, they goofy. sure do. And uh, Susan Collins, who. You know, probably the biggest rhino in the Senate, really, when you think about it. Other than uh, Mitt Romney, who says he'll vote for Biden over Trump. Yeah, well. So Mitt, Mitt Romney doesn't have, again, another millionaire, multimillionaire, doesn't have a problem with your high gas prices, doesn't have a problem with everything you buy. My wife and I just came back from the grocery store. We didn't have but about four or five bags tops, and it was 112 bucks. That didn't happen under Trump. It's happened under Biden. Do you remember any food, any food supply chain issues ever before Biden? I don't. You mentioned the grocery store the other day. My wife went to Meyer, and uh, they actually had signs posted apologizing for some of the bare uh, shelves. Again, you know, in other words, you know, and, and you know, my wife didn't exactly go into detail other than she went to purchase certain products and. And she was met with signage. You know, that's a Michigan based store. I don't know if anybody watching knows what that store is, but those stores are uh, always very well stocked. Yeah. So if it's not there, they don't have it. And why don't they have it? Ask yourself that question. Well, uh, one one final thing uh, on uh, as far as uh, the news since since the Michigan primary, I just wanted to review uh the New York Times Siena poll came out with some very interesting numbers, and it, 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 it has the Democrats worried. Overall, Trump beats Biden by uh, 
five percent. You know, Trump's got 48. Biden has 43. Uh, Trump has 49 percent men. Biden has 40. Uh, on uh, women, it's uh, even. 18 to 29 year olds, Biden has a slight lead. Uh, as far as eth- ethnicities, white, Trump 53, Biden 40. Here's something interesting. For, for black, Trump 23, Biden 66. And the reason why that particular poll is interesting is most Republicans seldom get over 10. Right. So so this 23, if accurate, is a big deal. I had, this, I had heard recently, and I think I might have heard it from Bill Maher, that the uh, the Democrats have dropped by 20 points with black voters, likely black voters. Yeah. And it's worse with Hispanics, too. Uh, right. Hispanics. Trump actually has a lead 46 to Biden's 40 uh, other minorities or other ethnicities will say Trump 45 Biden. 43. White college, Biden has the edge, 55 to 40. Uh, White without college, Trump has the edge, big edge. It's not even an edge, 62 to 29. Well, damn Uh, those uneducated people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Redneck fly. Well, you know what? You know what? Uneducated means without any education. So if you're not at what they feel is an acceptable level of education, a.k.a. brainwashing, then you're not educated at all. Yeah. Midwest, Trump has the, has the edge of 55 to 39. Uh, Biden barely leads in the suburbs, 46 to 44. And, and something to keep in mind, these suburbs include the likes of the suburbs of D.C. and that, too. Right. You know, so I'd take that 46 with a grain of salt. Uh, they're pumping his numbers up. Yeah, they I, I sure believe are. that no matter what they're saying. Uh, and so... Uh, I, I just wanted to go down that little kind of these stats from the New York Times Siena poll. Uh, I, I, I kind of found it kind of found it interesting. You know, Democrats are concerned. You know what? They're, they're going to have to employ a whole lot of electoral anomalies this time around. And, and even Trump is making the comment that we've got to swamp them to offset, uh, you know, any electoral anomalies that the Democrat Democrats uh, might attempt. Okay, correct. So that that's all I got. Uh, you know, uh, uh, next week we'll kind of do a review of Super Tuesday. And uh, boy, oh boy, you know, I <laughs> I heard Dan Bongino uh, uh, kind of uh, saying maybe Nikki Haley will uh, achieve the he calls it the full Mondale. You know, and, and that she'll lose every state. So, uh, you know, yes, she that's, will. What need, that's what needs to happen, man. That's what needs to happen with her. I, I, you know, she's become such a disappointment from what I've thought of her five years ago. You know, well, she's a sellout for money. And she and she's parroting. She's parroting the Democrat talking points. She's a political and, whore, you know. And here's where you can draw the distinction between her and DeSantis. You know, he, 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 unlike her, he would not necessarily parrot their talking points. I mean, she's going right down their talking points right now. And it's right. just. They're just exposing themselves for who they really are. Yep. So, and that's all we got for this one. Uh, a- any final thoughts or comments, Mac? No. Okay. All right. We'll we'll call this one a wrap and uh, see you in the next segment. Uh, Thanks, everyone. As always, be safe. Watch your six and don't tread on me.